Métis Nation as a people evolved out of the initial relations of Indian women and European men in the historic Northwest on the plains of today's prairie provinces. While the initial offspring of these relations were individuals who possessed mixed Indian and European ancestry, the gradual establishment of distinct Métis communities outside of Indian and European traditions, cultures and settlements, as well as the subsequent intermarriages between Métis women and Métis men, resulted in the genesis of a new Aboriginal people, the Métis, with their own unique culture, traditions, language, way of life, collective consciousness and nationhood. Indeed, the Métis were trailblazers. They helped settle Canada's West by working the lands, establishing a homeland, and building Métis economic activity during the fur trade of the Western interior. Since emerging as a distinct people and nation, the Métis have stood tall for recognition and stood firm for representative democracy. Cuthbert Grant is remembered as one of the first Métis leaders who helped to lead the charge for the rights of a new Aboriginal people in the Battle of Seven Oaks in 1816. Métis were the first to form democratically elected governments and organizations that shaped the early political history of a growing nation. Throughout its evolving existence, the Métis Nation has maintained its inherent rights of self-government and has matured governance structures and institutions that support the full implementation of this right. These governance structures and institutions have served the Métis Nation well by providing effective means of representation at a community, regional, national and international level. The Métis National Council was established in Ottawa in 1983, with high hopes of being a strong political voice for the people at the national level. But the MNC had remained a loose association of provincial organizations, with decisions made by provincial presidents. Critics called it the Old Boys Club. In 1994, a gathering of elected delegates in Winnipeg set out to broaden the MNC's base of representation and decision-making. We have a problem here that's been inherited, I know, from the Sinclair days and is going on now, but I want to know, because I don't have a copy of that Constitution in my hands, I want to know if there are provisions of the, uh, in that Constitution that exists for this assembly to really happen, or is this a figment of our imagination that we're here to addressing? It, does it still exist in that constitution and only the five president, do they have order overriding veto on anything happening here, or do they have to listen to the special assembly? I want to know that. Is it written in there? I'd like to see that, that document because if in fact we sit here and make all of these motions, which are well intended, can they then go back and make those, those kinds of changes? Because I have never been to an assembly that with the Maine National Council where, uh, where it seems to me that after a while, the, the five presidents get together and make the, make the decisions. I, on, Tony Belcourt has alluded to that and says, saying it's very undemocratic. I want to know if that un, undemocratic procedure is finding itself into this room and that if we do make those kinds of motions to make change, to, 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 to do things and give instructions, that they will indeed be listened to by anybody. And I'd like to see that document that says that. I want to assure the people that are that their questions. And they've been questioning for years, upon years, but the old voice club will not exist from today. Otherwise I will resign myself. I believe in open open government. We would like to have democracy. And the power must rest upon, uh, on our people. It must rest there. We cannot elect somebody anymore for future negotiations where all of a sudden this individual decides to take another direction without taking direction from his or her council or from, from his electorate or her electorate. With those words of encouragement and determination, Hopes were high that more democracy and nation building would soon emerge. And, uh, as an interim measure, talk about corporate restructuring of the secretariat.
to make it more democratic and accountable because as some of the delegates are expressing around the table, they're not satisfied with the status quo. And we're certainly prepared to make some changes today on an interim basis to the Secretariat uh, so that it's more in line with our people's thinking today. So we're more than willing uh, to do that. And someone from the Métis National Council will uh, introduce the uh, bylaw changes that the presidents would like to make today with the recommendation of this assembly. Um, and then after that, then we will come back to that motion of the proposed constitution and talk about not corporate restructuring, but talk about nation building for a government for the Métis Nation and people of Canada. And but questions remained. How would these hopes be realized? Right now, this, there, there is no such thing as a Métis Nation General Assembly. All you are is a, a forum to suggest things to the presidents and then we'll decide what we're going to do with, with it later and we don't have to listen to you, okay? Because the power is in the presidents. So what this is saying is that uh, we, we must, under this proposed bylaw change, have a Métis Nation General Assembly every 12 to 8 months so that the Métis Nation General Assembly can exercise its powers according to the Secretariat, which you will have if these bylaw provisions go through. How would members of the Assembly be selected? Uh, I would have a problem in the essence uh, if it was left up to the Board of Governors to decide who is in the brain. Uh, I don't see a problem why we wouldn't have delegates, elected provincial delegates coming. That's where the cho choice would come from. It could mean that I could choose 15 of my friends to come here because I'm the president and not choose my elected delegates. And then it leaves a situation of independence or opinions, different opinions coming forward. So I don't, would there be a problem by the president that we put a uh, selection from provincial elected delegates? Because that's how uh, most of us are here anyway. Always. A significant moment for the Métis Nation had arrived. It was time for action. Time for the presidents to step up and change the course of history. And this document must be signed today, and I hope it's done in a process where we can make history on this process. This, to me, this is one of the major changes that have ever taken place since the MNC came into power. The bylaws signed that day continue to govern the Métis National Council today. But almost 20 years later, the hopes of that day for an effective General Assembly remain unfulfilled. Despite clearly established bylaws, some provincial presidents believe they can handpick members and even fire elected members of their boards. The 2014 MNC General Assembly is about re-establishing respect for our democratically elected process, setting aside past practices, and moving toward constructive, fundamental change. MNC General Assembly 2014 a new constitution for the new nation, consolidating historic Métis Nation homeland boundaries, a national assembly as supreme authority of the Métis Nation, national citizenship registry, and the direct election of a national president. It's time to move on. It's time to reflect upon the hopes and aspirations of our ancestors who worked the land and fought so hard, giving their blood, sweat, and tears for the greater good of the Métis Nation.